Greetings, my Calculus AB brothers and sisters. Welcome to Unit 8. If you're an AB student, it's been a long journey, but you are now ready to start your very final unit of the course. Getting through a few ideas here, and then we can start preparing for the AP Calculus exam, which you're going to do very well on, might I add. So we're going to talk about topic 8.1, which is the mean value theorem for integrals leads to the average value of a function. A very cool application that you're going to see in a very easy one for the most part to follow along with. So let's take a look here. What we have is this theorem to, to lead things off with. And if you've got a pretty good memory, you might remember us talking about the mean value theorem back in, say, the first semester, because there was one that pertained to the derivative. Now, the two theorems kind of have the same philosophy, but they're really addressing two completely different things. So you don't really have to have a lot of prior knowledge about the mean value theorem from the first semester. So we're not going to really review that. We're going to dive right into the green box. And it simply says, if f of x is continuous on the closed interval, then there exists a number c in that closed interval, a, b, such that the definite integral of f of x from a to b is equivalent to f times that c times the difference between b and a, which probably means absolutely nothing to you, right? Now, maybe you're looking at this and thinking, well, that is area under the curve. That's great, because that's a start. That is the area under the curve f of x between a and b. And maybe this is something. <laughs> it's some y value times some distance between b and a, and it is. It's actually another area. It's the area of a rectangle. And so we're going to look at this in a little bit more specific light to help you understand what's really going on. So let's say that we take a function f of x equal 1 half x squared uh, plus 8. And I believe, I believe this function, now if I am allowed to amend this, this function is actually negative 1 half x squared plus 8. That way it opens down like this. So let's say that we have this particular function. The area under this function above the x-axis and between x equal to 0 and 4 is calculated to be 21.3. Now we could figure that out a variety of ways. It's not very difficult to do it by pencil and paper. I went ahead and used the graphing calculator and computed it to be 21.3. The purpose of this video is not to show you how to do those kinds of things that you're probably very knowledgeable of. It's to bridge the gap between those th things and what's in this green box. So let's move away from that picture that we know the area for, and look at this right picture. It says a value c exists between 0 and 4, right? See, that would be the interval that we have here, such that f of c times the difference between b and a, which is 4 and 0, is now the area under, is equal to the area under that curve f of x, and it turns out that that c value is about 2.3-ish. You're going to have to take a little bit of uh, uh, faith in that. But it's right about here. So in other words, if I define f of c to be this height here, which is somewhere between uh, 5 and 6, 5.3 specifically, and if I multiplied that 5.3 times 4, lo and behold, the answer is 21. Point three. So in other words, the problem is just saying that there is a place where you can draw or cap out the top of a rectangle that has the same exact area as the area under the curve. And it's going to happen every time there's a C value for which that's true. Now, a vitally important byproduct of the mean value for theorem for integrals is what we see on this next page. And this is where it is huge. This is what we must know and know well for the AP calculus exam. And that is the average value of a function. And it just simply says if f of x is integrable on the closed interval a to b, and then the average value of f of x is defined to be 1 over b minus a, times the integration of f of x from a to b. Now, if you're wondering what really that is, if I can go back one last time to the previous page, and if I divide this b minus a over here to the left, whoa, 
what happens is I have this f of c by itself, and that f of c is what this is really equivalent to. In simplest terms, f of c is the average value of the function. If you have a function from a to b, and I can make this function crazy, maybe this function looks like this, then there is an average value. There's an average height of this function somewhere. I'm just guesstimating that it would be right about there. It occurs at a C, and that's what we've computed. How tall, on average, all of the infinite number of points are on that function. I've basically taken every coordinate on this function, all of their y values, I've added them all together, well, that's a lot of them, and I've divided by how many that there were, a lot of them, and it's spitting out f of c. Pretty powerful thing that we're doing here. And so I want to just finish up by just doing a couple of quick examples that utilize the average value of a function. Let's take a look at number one here. f of x is 2x e to the negative x squared. Find the average value of f of x on the interval 2 to 5, and then we're going to find the c such that the average value of f of x is equivalent to that y value c. Notice that this is a calculator active question. It doesn't really have to be in the at the beginning stages, but we will use a calculator uh, because that has to be done for part b. So the average value of a function is defined as the integral from a to b with a 1 over b minus a in front. So basically what you're doing is you're finding your good old-fashioned area between the curve and the x-axis, but you're just dividing it by the difference between b and a. That's all that's going to happen. Now you are you are going to get a bit of a workout for your integration, which is good. And this is one that I want to go ahead and do by hand just to get some practice with this. So we will be able to use u substitution. If you're wondering why well, because it works. We have this 2x in front, which is pretty much exactly what we hoped to have, uh, albeit without the negative, of course, but we can fix that by just placing that in front, no problem. And so what we've really got here is the integration of e to the u. I hope that you see that. His answer is e to the u, which is e to the negative x squared in this case. The one-third is still in front, and don't forget, we had to offset with a negative because of this guy right here. I can still use my boundaries of 5 and 2 because notice I've taken myself back to x, the world of x. So what I have here, if I were to uh, simplify, I'll just keep that negative one-third factored out. I'll replace the x with 5. I end up with e to the negative. 25. Now be careful, this negative is not going to be squared. He's going to always be there. And then I'll subtract e to the negative 2 squared is 4. And that's perfectly acceptable as an answer. It probably doesn't float your boat very well because it's kind of hard to relate to. And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll type this into a calculator here and see what we've got. So here we go, and there's a variety of ways that I can do this, but I'll start with that negative one-third. And going from memory, I think we had e to the negative 25 minus e to the negative, was it uh, 4, I believe? Get a decimal, so we get decimal output. And we get this point 006105. Now, just so you know, you could have also have used the calculator from the very outset if you set it up like this, and it would have worked just perfectly. 2x times e to the negative x squared, uh, squared there with respect to x. And notice we get the exact answer, <laughs> a little bit of a little bit of a simplifying, interestingly enough, but 0 0.006105. So let's return back to the document now. And so we're going to go ahead and say this is equivalent to point. 0, 0, 006. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw all the decimals. Now, I suppose that you would only be obligated to go out to the sixth to get your three decimal places. So that takes us to part B. Find C such that the average value of f of x is equal to f of c. Well, what they want is just exactly what the problem is stating. f of x must be set equal to this f of c. So you have your 2x 
e to the negative x squared set equal to this point zero zero six one zero five value and the x that we get from this is actually going to be that c value that, that we're discussing here so we're just trying to find out where does it occur that we have this y value equivalent to this number and i know this number is very small this is a tough problem if you wanted to graph because you really can't you know, you'd have to zoom in a lot to really get any kind of understanding about the meaning or the magnitude of that number. Let's go back to the calculator and solve this equation. Meanwhile, at our trusty calculator, I'm going to go into Menu, Algebra, and Solve. Those of you who are, let's go down here and try that again. Those of you who are using a TI-84, obviously you have some different alternatives. If you're using a non-CAS version of the TI Inspire, you're going to have to use some alternative uh, uh, ways to do this, which pretty much means that you would have to sketch this graph, put this into your Y1 uh, menu or your F1 of X menu, and graph as well the point zero zero six one oh five, and then you're going to have to determine where those two graphs intersect. We're going to do it like this, and whoops, looks like we've got a little syntax error here because, because it doesn't like something that we're doing here. We're going to solve 2x times e to the negative x squared equal. <laughs> looks like that's still up in the exponent spot. Sometimes things like that happen, right? Let's get out of that exponent spot, 0 0.006105. I'd love to tell you that that was on purpose just to show you the various things that can go wrong but sometimes your teachers make mistakes as well and there's our answer i'm going to move my face out of the way and yes we do have two results here we have two different answers now let's think about these two answers 0 0.003 and 2.597 whatever we use as our answers we have to make sure that they fall within the boundaries of our given A and B, which is from two to five. So because of that, this guy here is going to get kicked to the curb and only use 2.597. I'm gonna just round it right there. Let's go back to the document. So here we go. We're gonna solve and we notice that the answer was approximately 2.59. 7 or 2598 depending on how the rounding may have happened throughout the problem and so that would take care of that part uh, b let's go on and take a look at part or example two rather we'll read through this it says find the average value of f of x equal 3x squared minus 2x on the interval 1 to 4. it is so nice to see that the interval 1 to 4 uh, is showing up on the graph nicely. We actually have a sketch. And then find the value of C guaranteed by the mean value theorem for integrals for that above function. So it's the carbon copy of the problem that we just did. Uh, the only difference, we're not using a calculator. If you want to challenge yourself, this would be an awesome time. You could pause this video. I would say if you work through this and solve it and your answer matches mine, there's probably half of the problems on the skill builder that you might be able to skip because you pretty much have the skill down pat. Uh, take a chance. Try that out. See if you match. All right. So let's see. Average value. We're going to take one over the difference between our endpoints, 4 minus 1, and integrate from 1 to 4 of our function 3x squared minus 2x, all with respect to x. All right, so here we go. This is going to be 1 third, and then let's do it. Let's integrate 3x squared. That's going to be 3x cubed over 3, also known as x cubed, minus the integration of 2x is 2x squared over 2, also known as x squared. You can see I tried to help us out a little bit, give us some nice results there. And so now we have our one third out in front. We're going to plug three in for, uh, I'm sorry, the four in for x. Four to the third is 64. Four squared is 16. Subtract the quantity, do the same thing, plugging in one, but not a whole lot's going to happen there because one cubed minus one squared is one minus one or zero. And so when all is said and done, you get one third of 48, which is. 16. So we actually have a pretty nice result there.
might mean that we're going to have a pretty nice result. Maybe, not guaranteed for part B, but we're going to take a look. So if we take a look at part B, find the value of C guaranteed by the mean value theorem for integrals. So that basically says you take your function, 3x squared minus 2x in this case, and let's find for what x or C along the x-axis is this equivalent to that y value of 16, which is right about here. The average value is right about here. Well, in fact, you can kind of see on the graph. In fact, I think the answer is going to be 2.67. According to my graph, let's take a look. So to solve this, you're going to go back to Algebra 1, and you're just basically going to do some factoring here. This is kind of a, a nasty little factoring because it doesn't have a common factor that you can bring out to the front. So you got to kind of guess and check your way through this using 3x and x. Oh, maybe 8 and 2 if we put them in the right spots. Uh, let's see, that's an 8x. That would be a 6x. Oh, there's a way that we can get a minus 2 if we play our signs right. There we go. And now we can see that if we solve each of these set equal to 0, x could either equal 8 thirds or possibly negative 2. Well, we're going to kick this guy to the curb, aren't we? Because he is not in our interval. Only the 8 thirds is. That, by the way, is 2 and 2 thirds. That is our 2.67. And one more time, what did we do in part A? I think it's one of the coolest things in all of calculus. This purple dot happens to be, happens to be along this part of the curve that I'm highlighting from 1, 2, 3, all the way up here to 4, is the average y height. It's the average y value of all of the y values along that or, uh, yellow stretch. And this kind of gets the ball rolling for average value of a function. Uh, we do have one more kind of application-based problem that we're going to show you about milk. And uh, that'll be a very good uh, sort of uh, a depiction of what you could see on the AP exam as far as uh, average value of a function. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks for joining.